Hi there and welcome to my video on balancing the batteries on my MG ZS EV. So I've decided it's time to do a balancing of the battery on my car. It's something that is recommended to be done in the user manual. I'm not a technical expert when it comes to battery balancing but essentially the battery pack is made up of 108 individual battery cells and as you charge and discharge those cells over time they start to become imbalanced so each cell has a different state of charge and what the balancing will do is equalize those charges so they're all back to the same and that helps maximize the available power from the battery and also helps prolong its life. As I say I'm not an expert on this so that's about as technical as I can get Get. So now what we'll do is take a look at what it says in the owner's manual. So there's a small reference to it in the preface and the owner's manual refers to it as equalisation charging. Basically it's recommended that it's carried out at regular intervals. It doesn't actually define what they determine as regular in this bit and it helps extend the service life of the battery pack. So if we go to the equalisation charging section, okay, so this is a section on equalisation charging and basically once the battery gets to 100%, the battery management system will then attempt to equalise the charge of every battery cell in the pack. If you don't carry it out for some time, you do get a message on the dashboard saying to slow charge the vehicle. And we'll have a look at that section as well in the owner's manual. But on average, they say it takes at least seven and a half hours to complete the charge that includes the equalisation charge. So it's going to go beyond the four hours of Octopus Go tariff that I'm on so I'm going to have to change the time charge as well. So if we have a look at the slow charging bit it says that if it's not being conducted for a long time then the charge time will be extended and you should also do an equalisation charge prior to using the car after a long period of storage or non-use. So it's referring to slow charging as using an AC device with an output rating of 7 kilowatts. If I use the granny charger, it's going to increase it even more the time. So I can do it on my home charger, which is what I'm going to use. So really, read in the owner's manual, all that we have to do is plug it in. Once it gets to 100%, leave it going. And then, obviously, once the balancing is done, the charger will power down, and that will be it all complete. So there's a few phrases within the owner's manual, like after a long period of time, or at regular intervals but it doesn't actually define what those are so I guess it's very much down to individual owners use to determine whether you want to do an equalization charge or not I've seen some posts saying it should be done every month I think for the amount of mileage I'm doing at the minute for me it's not worth doing it that frequently the owner's manual does say you will get a warning when it needs to do it so the car is monitoring itself and will tell you if it needs doing it doesn't mean to say you have to wait for that warning you can do it before then so for me coming up to six months I think it's worth doing i did charge it up to 100 percent recently and the voltage on it was 450 rather than 455 volts so that does suggest it might need doing it'll be interesting to see whether that voltage increased after i've done the equalization charge so at the moment the cars are seven bars so it's a fraction under the full amount my plan is to start the car charging at half past midnight which is when the off-peak time period starts so i can get that last bar of charge done at the cheap off-peak rate and then the car will carry on for however many hours it needs to to do that equalization charge i've seen posts on facebook from people saying it took 12 hours for their equalization charge so what i'm going to do is go onto the my energy app and change my time charge and i'm going to put it on for 20 hours i doubt i will actually need that long but it will give me enough that the charger won't power down and interrupt that equalization charge as it's happening so what I need to do in the My Energy app is change the time charging for the Zappi. So I've currently got it for four hours from half past midnight. The maximum time you can do is eight hours. So what I'm going to need to do is once I've set that up for eight hours, I'm going to have to set a second one up to start at 8.30 for another eight hours. And then I'll do another one from 4.30 for four hours and that will give me 20 hours, which should be more than enough to do the time charge. I did notice in the instructions if you set up a uh, time charging and there's a conflict between two times then it will take the latest time so if you overlap the timings for the time charge then it won't work as it should do so that's the second one from half eight and then 
the last one will be from 1630 and I'll do that for four hours and I'll need to remember to delete these and change them back once we've done the equalization charge so that's that set up now so what I need to do now is plug in the car but I can't do that before 830 otherwise the last time charge that I've set up will kick in so I'll probably go and do that about nine o'clock and then that will start from half past midnight and then we'll see what's happened with the charge overnight when we get up in the morning so this is what the app's showing so the charge at half past midnight started and then it dropped off probably around about 230 down to about two or three hundred watts and then has stayed on charge up until around about eight o'clock by the looks of it tailing off towards the end so it looks like it's all done 11.4 Four kilowatt hours have gone in so we'll go and have a look at the car now and get it unplugged so we've got a blue light on the charger which means the charging is complete and if we just come around to the front you can see there's no pulsing or no steady white light on the MG badge which means it's completely finished the balance as well so we'll now unplug it So what's happened now, I didn't get there quick enough before the 8.30 timed boost was due to start. And we now actually again have the solid white light on the MG badge. So it started balancing again. I'll leave it for a little bit and not interrupt that and uh, see how long that takes. So this is how it looks in the app at the moment. Currently the car taking on one kilowatt of power. And if we go in there now, it's just started off again charging. We've now dropped to 0.3 kilowatts, so it looks like it's still balancing. So it makes me wonder why it stopped balancing earlier, because it definitely had completed. So we'll see how much longer it takes on the 0.3 kilowatts, because the previous balance looks like it was only happening for around about four hours where the manual and other posts that I've seen on Facebook seem to suggest that the balancing could take up to 12 hours so that does seem quite short but we'll keep an eye on it through the day and see what happens. So I've now got a blue light back on the charger according to the charger screen it's put in 0.84 kilowatt hours so not a huge amount after it's kicked back in. As you can see the MG badge has now gone out so it didn't spend too long I don't think doing that second balance after it started off again on the second time charge. So I'll have a look in the app in a bit. I'm having problems with the hub and the devices communicating which will be the subject of another video I'll do on those problems but right now it looks like we're fully balanced so we'll get the car unplugged. So as we can see in the app when the second time charge started so it's added about 0.84 kilowatt hours and it ran for about two hours. I've got to say I was a little surprised when it started charging again at 8.30 I would have thought if the battery was 100% and the balance was 100% after the first eight hours then the battery management system would have told the charger it didn't need any more power and would have switched off straight away it did stay on and do another two hours balancing okay so we'll just start the car so just having a look at the electrical information so we've got 457 volts according to that so certainly well balanced now the batteries so it looks like it's gone well so just looking at the cost of this so the battery charge up to 100 percent plus the balancing with a total of 11.94 kilowatt hours around 10 and a half of those were at five pence per kilowatt hour 1.44 kilowatt hours at the peak rate of 13.8 pence per kilowatt hour so overall cost just 73 pence for that bit of charge and the balance now if it had done all the charging and balancing at peak rate so it didn't have to worry about time charging that would have cost £1.64 so less than a pound more so it's still quite cheap to do all the balancing even if we'd have done it at peak rate. So I think for future equalisation charges I'm either going to need to be on the ball and a bit more organised in the morning to make sure I unplug before the second time charge kicks in or given that if I start the battery charge at around 90% the overall cost doing it all during peak time is pretty minimal that way I can just start the charger without the need to use the timer and it can just stay on until it's all done and I don't need to worry about a second time charge kicking in if I've not unplugged it soon enough still not 100% sure why the zappy is limited to eight hours on a, a time charge I don't see there's any benefit in having the charger set up in that way why you can't do a 12 or a 16 hour time charge it doesn't really make sense to me but the eight hours is what it is so I'll just have to work around that in terms of the frequency of doing the battery balancing this was my 17th home charge so I'm 
kind of thinking it'll probably be every maybe 10 or 15 home charges that I do will be the balance charge. I think that's a fairly reasonable number. The increase from 450 to 457 volts shows that the balancing does actually add some extra volts to the battery pack. So it is worthwhile doing. I think it is down to each individual owner to work out how regularly they they want to do it i don't think there's a right and or wrong answer be interesting to know your thoughts and how often you do your battery balancing if you pop that down in the comments below but i think for me i'm happy with that every 10 to 15 charge frequency as i said earlier in the video i will do it after rapid charging as well i think that should be enough to keep the battery in a healthy condition so thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed the video found it useful and stay tuned for more videos